Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. While Brexit might have been taking the spotlight, with the UK and EU's deal receiving a lot of scrutiny, there was another deal which somewhat slipped under the radar. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the recently signed EU-China Investment Agreement, officially known as the EU-China Comprehensive Agreement on Investment, or CAI. Before we do though, if you're interested in stories like this, you should definitely subscribe to the channel for more European news. Also, if you're interested in international news, we've just started a brand new channel called TLDR Global, where all of our international coverage, such as our videos on China, will be headed in the future. There's a link to the channel in the description, so be sure to click it and subscribe. Thanks so much for all of your support. So, some context. Firstly, the CAI is not the same as a full-on trade agreement. It's less about tariffs and quotas, and more about letting EU investors into Chinese market sectors, like health and infrastructure, which were previously closed to EU countries, as well as guaranteeing investors some degree of security. Negotiations for the CAI started all the way back in 2013, and took seven years and 35 rounds of talks in order to reach an agreement, which was finally announced on December 30th, 2020. By the way, this is just an agreement in principle. The deal's full text is yet to be published, so it hasn't yet been ratified by the European Parliament, and this probably won't actually end up happening until 2022. Negotiations have been driven primarily by Germany, with Angela Merkel saying last year that she wanted to get the deal finished in the second half of 2020, under the German presidency of the European Council. This is probably at least in part because Germany does a lot of trade with China. China has been Germany's largest import market since 2016, and is currently its third largest export market. Also, the largest EU investment sector in China is the automotive industry, which is obviously a big deal for Germany. But that's not to say that this deal will only benefit Germany, though. EU foreign direct investment in China has remained relatively low over the last 20 years, at a grand total of 140 billion euros, while at the same time Chinese FDI into the EU has shot up. This is mainly because the EU has, up until now, been much more open to foreign investment than China, so this agreement is supposed to go some way to rebalancing this. In fact, China has one of the most restrictive FDI regimes in the world. You get the point. Chinese companies can invest and do business in the EU relatively easily, but EU companies struggle to enter the Chinese market. So what's exactly in the agreement? Well, as we mentioned before, we don't actually have the full legal text, but the EU have published a document outlining the key elements of the deal. According to this, the CAI will be the most ambitious agreement that China has ever concluded with a third country. So let's start with the finance and investment stuff, before we move on to other issues like labour standards, workers' rights and the environment. The CAI prevents China from backsliding on investment liberalisation, which should provide more certainty to potential investors. But this isn't necessarily huge news, because it basically just preserves the status quo. The big issue for would-be European investors are Chinese state-owned enterprises, or SOEs. These are basically companies that are partially owned by the Chinese government. These companies obviously have a massive competitive advantage over other companies. For example, they might be subsidised by the Chinese government, or get preferential access to government contracts. The EU statement on this is pretty soft. It only requires SOEs to act in accordance with commercial considerations, and only requires China to be more transparent on its subsidy regime, and only when it comes to services. Although it has to engage in consultations, this doesn't sound legally binding. There's also a bit in there about a dispute resolution mechanism, but it's pretty vague. The only thing we know about it is that it's a state-level dispute resolution mechanism, but that's not great for individual investors, who aren't necessarily protected by it. We'll have to wait for the official legal text to find out how robust the mechanism actually is, but the EU should hope that it's pretty robust, because China has made similar commitments about the state-owned enterprises when it joined the WTO in 2001, which they basically ignored ever since. On specific sectors, the CAI apparently opens up the automotive sector by getting rid of joint venture requirements, which has basically prevented European companies from having a controlling stake in Chinese automotive companies. 
It's worth noting here that China has been opening up its automotive sector voluntarily since 2018 though, so again, not too much to write home about here. On financial services, China has agreed to scrap joint venture requirements and foreign equity caps, which provides the EU with exactly the same level of access the US currently enjoys under their so-called Phase 1 agreement with China. So that's the relatively boring financy stuff out of the way. There's also a little bit on labour and environmental standards, which is considerably more interesting. Let's start with the environment. The EU statement claims that the CAI includes a commitment from China to implement the Paris Agreement. Again, it's worth noting that last year China unilaterally reinstated their Paris Agreement commitment to having CO2 emissions peak before 2030 and then achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. On labour rights, which are particularly salient given the forced labour camps in Xinjiang, the EU statement says conspicuously little despite the fact that von der Leyen claimed that it provided the EU with a lever to eradicate forced labour. The ILO has six fundamental conventions, and China has so far only ratified four of them. It hasn't ratified C029 and C105, which are about forced labour, or C087 and C098, which are about the right to organise via a union. The CAI just says that China will continue working towards ratification, but there's no deadline provided or anything like that, so it's hard to see why China won't just ignore it. The final thing worth mentioning about the deal, and the reason it's got a fair bit of coverage recently, is that it's a bad start for the EU's relations with the incoming Biden administration. Jake Sullivan, Biden's national security adviser, tweeted in response to a Reuters article about the deal that the US would welcome early consultations from the EU on China strategy, but it seems to have been ignored by the EU so far. Biden's made it clear that he wants a more coordinated response to China between the EU and US, and the EU signing an investment deal with China just before the Biden administration takes the reins isn't a great start. Now, to be fair to the EU here, the deal only gave the EU similar levels of market access to the levels that the US currently enjoys under its Phase 1 US-China agreement. And it's also worth noting that Merkel, who is one of the main architects of this deal, argued in 2017 that the EU has to stop relying on its relationship with America. Whether that's justified or not, this will certainly put some strain on EU-Biden relations. Anyway, that's all we know about the deal thus far, but we'll have to wait for the full agreement to get all of the details, and ultimately time will tell whether China actually will stick to its commitments on major issues like labour and the environment. Let us know what you think about the deal in the comments below, and as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates. Also, make sure to check out the TLDR Global channel. We're posting our first video on Monday, so make sure you've subscribed and hit the bell so that you're notified over there when we post. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.